It's time to enter a world of fashion, glamour and glitz and the greatest pop music of all time. Not to mention leg warmers and Rubik's Cubes. It's time to stand and deliver the music. Welcome to the world of music. It's DJ Sonic. The two grey ones. Hello. Uh, Sophia Mirza. Hello. Sophia, lovely name. You're through to Nick and Simon. Um, I'd like to talk to Nick. Hello, Sophia. Hello. Um, I wanted to ask you, what did your mum think of your makeup? What did she think of it? Yes. Oh, um, I think she thinks it's just fine. She borrows it, actually. Why don't you ask what I think of it? <laughs> oh, what do you think of it then? I think it's just fine. I borrow it all the time. <laughs> became a phenomena so quickly that everybody that that was kind of over you know it was kind of swept away you know it, it just it felt like we were manufactured wow she whiz aren't you gorgeous wow fabulous you deserve us I sure do. Are, I sure do. You're just desserts. Well, you know what? I've always, I always fantasized that I was the uh, the colored girl in the Hungry Like the Wolf video. Mm -hmm. You should have been. I, I should have been, right? Yes. Yeah. Honey, I'll make you hungry, all right. <laughs> hey, you got a brand new album out. It's yeah. called, um, help me with the name. Okay. Medazzaland. Medazzaland, that's right. right. Like dazzling, is that right? Sort of bedazzling, yes. Well, I mean, your whole career has been, uh, you guys have been like, like dazzling. You, you, you wear makeup, you do, you do a show. Mm -hmm. In fact, I opened for you guys in Boston, right. remember yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, my remember. god, I opened for Duran Duran, oh my god! Yeah, it's, great. it's fun. Hey, you guys got a tour with the new album? Yes, we are. We've, we're putting together um, a little show now, which we're going to take out um, starting off the beginning of November. Actually, we've got a show at the Whitney Museum. It's the Andy Warhol um, exhibition opening, which is also a huge charity event. We're going to play at that on the 6th of November. Oh, that sounds great. And we're kicking off the tour on the 12th. On the 12th of November? Through the 20th of December. In Boston. In, Bo in Boston yeah. again. That's where I opened up for you guys. Now, Nick, you knew Andy Warhol. I did, indeed. Yeah. And what, was he like? what was he like in the sack? Uh, that I don't know. <laughs> he did always used to wear a badge, actually, that said, I had sex with Nick Rhodes, but it wasn't true. <laughs> oh, and you guys, are, you've all married or been associated with models. Yeah. Now, what's that all about? Now, answer don't me ask this. Don't ask Nick that question. Don't ask Nick that question. <laughs> Ask me that. Now, are the modeling agencies really just high-class, exclusive escort agencies for rock stars? <laughs> of course they are. As far as we are concerned, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, that's that's oh, politically incorrect. Uh -oh. Is it? Oh, dear. No, no, no. Yeah. Wait, because you've we been married for 10 years to, to, of course, yes. 12 years. 12 years, years now? Yeah, 12 Three years. kids. Three kids. Um, eight years old, six years old, and two... two um, and three years old. Oh. And when I get back to England, it's half-term holiday, so, and, I, and Yasmin's doing the shows in Paris, which means I've got to look after them. Uh, <laughs> yay! That will be fun. <laughs> hey, now, I know you're married, but we have a little aptitude test we do here on the RuPaul show. It's called Shag Wooden Shag, right. okay? Yeah. Now, which we well, already is, did. You know, this is <laughs> so funny. <laughs> It's so Done that one. You know, this, this, but this is the game that most guys in England play when they're bored waiting for a train. You know? Really? So they, they just watch the people, watch the women walking by thinking, would I shagger, would I, would I shagger? <laughs> yeah, I'd shagger. I was really desperate. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. It's well, like, I, I do that in the gym the every day. Yeah, 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 yeah well, the, everybody does it. And, and, let me pull up these people right quick here. Now, let's pull up the first shag, wooden shag, okay, guys? It is uh, Anna Nicole Smith, right? There's never in a million years. Never for you? No. What do you got? I don't think so. No? No. <laughs> no. no. I think we... you can get uh, silicone Maybe poisoning just, just laying on top of it. Maybe I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> hey, the stuff's I'm, leaking, you know? I'm not old enough. <laughs> You're not old enough. Right, that's right, because her uh, old woman was like 60 years yeah. older than her. Maybe if, she, maybe if I was 17, she was 20, maybe. Oh, well, you still got some years on you. Yeah. Okay, let's do, uh, let's do the next one. Who's next? Oh, Charlie's Angels. Definitely wood shag. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> well, actually... Only in the outfits. Only yeah. with the wearing yeah, outfits. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I have to say it. <laughs> okay, who's next up? Oh, the Rolling Stones! Mick, years ago, maybe. Mick, years ago. <laughs> 
Performance error. Yeah, I'm just a sucker. I'm just a sucker for a man in a well-cut suit. Charlie yeah, Watts Charlie. is just gonna... <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right. What is up next? Oh, the Spice Girls. Well, we have a problem with them. <laughs> <laughs> what, is, now you have, what problem do you have with them more? I like she Shelly Winter Spice. <laughs> Shelly Winter Spice, okay. <laughs> and what about, you, what about you, Simon? Well, the Spice Girls. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I did have an erotic fantasy about um, about posh spice, but she was half posh spice and half a ballet dancer called Darcy Bustle. It was a dream. <clears throat> Remind me to have you tell me about that a little bit later. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to analyze that one. They're the same person. You know, actually, um, posh spice is is my favorite is spice she? girl. Yeah. Did you have a favorite spice girl, Nick? Uh. Mm, I no, I don't think I do no. really. No. <laughs> I like the Coco one. The Coco, yes. I, that's, uh, what's your name, Michelle? Mel, Mel B. Mel B. Scary oh, Spice. Scary Spice, yeah, yeah. Scary Spice is kind of the I like the Coco one. Hey, now, speaking of Coco, now, Warren, you were in another band that we all love. Which uh, one? <laughs> Missing Person. Yeah, all right. I want to know. I know. Where I the hell is Del Bazzi out? She's living in Boston. I heard that you, you met her in a club once. And I sure you were, did. You asked her why you dressed up like Del Bazzi, and she said, because I am Del Bazzi. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> love missing persons. Yeah. Love missing. What's the craziest thing? Girl, I know girls love you. I, these girls over here definitely love you. Nick, Nick I want to ask you this. What's the craziest thing uh, a girl groupie or fan has ever done to get close to you guys? Uh, well, I'm getting married to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, go easy, JK, JK. I don't, I don't, so many things. I mean, uh, I think finding them in your room when they didn't have a key is Ooh. kind of the, the scariest yes. one. The sort of slightly psycho one, you know? Oh, my, my goodness. I had, I had a Japanese fan in the wardrobe once. Yeah. On the what? In the wardrobe Was when I good? entered my room. And it was great. I opened the door and she came out and she went, Oh, not John Taylor's room. <laughs> Uh, do you guys ever see John Taylor at all anymore? I just saw him yeah. about a week ago in Gold's Gym in Venice. Uh, it, oh, you live in great. Los Angeles? No, we were just there working, yeah. doing stuff. And he was there at like 8 a.m. training. He was in great spirits. What's he doing now? Is he in a band? He's, he's got a label called B5, and he's, uh, he's got some bands that he signed to the label, and oh, he's doing excellent. some solo music. Oh, great, great. Hey, you guys, stay right there, okay. because, guys, when we come back, we're going to have a performance from Duran Duran. So and Louise Sarrell on the line. Hello, Louise. Hello. Where are you calling from? Manchester. From Manchester. Simon Hello. and Nick, all yours. I'd like to talk to Simon, please. Hello, Louise, how are you? Okay, thanks. Why did Duran Duran split up into two separate groups? Um, well, we haven't actually split up. We're going to be getting back together in May to make another album. We just decided that we needed a little bit of space to, to experiment in a way that we couldn't with the group because the group's so sort of got its own way of working. We wanted to try different ways out so that we could use them when we got back together. Uh, was it, did you like going on your yacht, Fabry? I do like going on... Yeah, I, I was scared. I do like going on the yacht, though. OK? Uh, All right. right thank Thanks you. for your question. Bye-bye. Good luck to Manchester. You've been away from Britain for two and a half months now. Yes. And all these fans are going, where have you been? What have you been doing? I mean, we just saw there that, that video clip and you were saying that that was actually filmed at one of your concerts. Yeah, that was in Toronto. And actually, well, it was two live shows actually put together, you know, slotted together. But, but what I was saying was that, that, you know, it wasn't a set-up job with the audience and uh, paid people to come in and things like right. that, on us doing the studio work. It's quite unusual for Duran Duran to do a, a, a performance video like that because you normally do all these th basically i never understand it's funny you should say that actually because two two years ago we said we'll, we'll never ever make a live video we'll never do that you know that was one of the things we really sort of had to stand up against but um having having said that for so long we thought it was about time we went back on our word and did one so yeah. we did but we tried to make it a bit different from everybody else's you know put some extra bits in, in that little effect i don't know if you've seen the wave that comes over the audience Yes, we saw that. And the guy looks up yeah. and gets a bucket of water right. in his face. So some good comedy moments in there as well. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so there is some, there's some fun in your music, because you, you, you were getting fairly serious about things, weren't you? With Union of the Snake, which was the, the last record, it was all fairly deep stuff, wasn't it? You were getting very serious about life. Is that, um, is that a phase serious, that the band goes as through? As serious as one can get in, in a pop group, I suppose, yeah. really. You can't get too serious. I know some, some people do get very serious. But um, uh, in a band like us, five guys who keep jumping on you, sort of mentally and physically, 
you've got to keep a sense of humour, otherwise you go a mm. bit silly. Two and a half months away from Britain, do you now have a different view of Britain? Well, um, I, I came back on Thursday, and it looks very different from, from inside than it does from outside. And I'm not quite sure what it is. I know I'm glad to be back. It looks much better from, from, from being inside even than What do you think? Our, our image out abroad is not as good as the image it's we've not, got No, ourselves. it's not that good at the moment, actually. No, it's not. Six. Birmingham. From Birmingham. Right, Nick and Simon. Yeah, Birmingham. Hello. Um, if you could be a fly on the wall, who fans would you like to be in and why? <gasps> <laughs> I was going to say, which uh, fly would you like to be? That's a very good question. It sounds like something that's in Smash Hit. <clears throat> yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, um, uh, I'd like, I know, I'd like to be in um, Ronnie and Nancy's bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> why? I don't why, know. Simon? It'd be interesting. I don't um, have to say why. Find out who makes the decisions. <laughs> um, That's it. I think I'd like to be in uh, somebody near my records bedroom, but we won't mention quite who now because he's got some things to answer. <laughs> there we are. Okay, thank That's you. Can I have your autograph, please? Uh, yes. 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 Who's, whose bedroom wall would you like to be a fly on? <laughs> Hello. Hello. Whose be who's bedroom wall would you like to be a fly on? Um, I'm John's. <laughs> John's. John's. <laughs> <laughs> John, who? Right. Thanks for your call. We think Thank we you. know. They do look that way. And then he's back. Yeah. What about pointing out the yacht? Your yacht. What about what? what? Pointing is a yacht. Yeah, that's, that's a good no, your idea. Yacht. Your yacht. What have you found has been the, the toughest part at this point of stardom? I suppose it's changed as you've gone along. Well, now, I think, um, well, like that adjustment was made, maybe. You know, a year ago, and now, I'm, I mean, we're almost like, we're always on camera in a way. Which you are, I think, in a way. You know, if you go into a shop, you know, people are going to be, if we were to walk into a shop, and you know, people are going to be staring at us all the time. You can't uh, be sorry now when people take such a close look at you, yeah. because three years ago, you were only too willing to offer yourself, you know, to sort of say, because you want exposure, you know. And you can't suddenly shut the door and say, no, I want to be private now, when... Mm -hmm. uh, you know, three years ago, we needed the publicity. I mean, that's the game. The band made a name for themselves with new wave dance hits coupled with their new romantic fashions, lots of eye makeup and tinted hair. The sexual ambiguity created by the look was also part of their plan. We were called Fag Rock when we first yeah, came to America. Yeah, that's right, that's right. People used to say, yeah. I mean, I mean, I don't, it doesn't really bother us either way. I mean, oh, it's quite good, actually, because women are always very intrigued. They want to find out, and if they think you are, they want to convert you as well. <laughs> it's brilliant. Did you ever feel that you really had to do battle against that, though? No, why battle against I don't think there's anything to battle against yeah, it. I mean, uh, it doesn't bother me if anybody thinks I'm gay or whatever. Not that I'm not. It's, 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 it's the people who count, the people who count, they're well enough sus to, to work out what you, you know, what you are. Mm. Work you out for what you are. Or they wouldn't give a damn anyway. No pressure, you know, just pressure to, to sort of getting along and doing what's in front of us, you know, and have a good time doing it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Squeeze maybe another one in. Uh, Louise Fodden, hello. Hello. Hi, Louise. Hi. Hello, Louise. You've got through. Hello, I like to ask them both what makes them laugh. What? What makes you laugh? Oh, things that are funny. Yeah. <laughs> Tommy, um, Tommy Cooper makes me laugh. Um, I, I like uh, spitting images and not the nine o'clock news. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> what about the rerun of Faulty Towers? Uh, oh, I've seen those so many times. I know, yeah. Um, Calling big audiences. Yeah, what about funny, you, sir? Though. I like little people hitting themselves over the head. <laughs> <laughs> watches too much Allah, I love. Uh, it watches too much Punch and Judy. Um, no, I like, I, like, um, I like jokes. I like... Uh, what kind of jokes? I really like English comedians like Tommy Cooper and Will Hay. Oh. And, Who? Um, have you ever heard of Gerard Hoffnung? Gerard oh, yes. Hoffnung. Do the, draw the lovely drawings? Yes, absolutely. The musical, and the story of the bricklayer. The bricklayer's story. If you can never get a copy of that record, you should do, because it's very funny. That's the okay. bricklayer's story by Gerard Hoffnung. Th thanks very much for your call. Um, can yeah. I have the same photograph, please? Oh, I would imagine so. Yeah. yeah. And can you throw yeah. a kiss to Catherine and me? Throw a kiss? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Mm. Sorry, that's what we've got time for. Sorry to okay. through. <clears throat> Answers to the competition on a postcard or a sealed down envelope. Simon Nick, thanks very much for coming. Thanks for
sex. Why don't you want to have sex? If you had to change places with any of the other band members, who would you change places with and why? What is it? I don't know. Actually, Simon's got a very nice house. Um, come to think of it, his wife's very attractive. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but then John was in LA. I have a Bob and Nick's art collection. <laughs> and the date, but John married into money. <laughs> And Roger, well, we have to live in LA. We all know what Roger's fabulous attribute is. <laughs> He's a great drummer. <laughs> I can see, I can see a big big reality show, actually. <laughs> <laughs> they all swap places for one reason. This is what happens. So, Jeffrey. Interesting. Right, I'm, I'm Simon Lebon, singer of Duran Duran. This is Arsenio Hall, the presenter of tonight's show. This is Nick Rhodes, the synthesis of Duran Duran. Synthesis. Can you synthesize synthesizer? Yes. 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 That's deep, man. That's like a pianist. He's <laughs> a really good guy. Yeah. 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 It's not just piano player. A synthesis. It's a modern world. Yes. Yes. And, this... and I'm John. I'm John. I'm John. <laughs> That's an interesting sound. John is sex. You know. <laughs> you are sex. No. No. no touring members. Yeah, so it, the thing is, we're too close now. You yeah, know, we've to been together. We this this these two have been together for eight years, but I've been with them for six. And, and you just the rest, eight. Well, yeah, right. Long time. They grew up together. But I mean, it's just and it's hard enough for me to fit in. You know. Oh, gee. <laughs> <It's got you. laughs> Scorpio, you see? All these Gemini's running around. You see, there's four of us and one of him. <laughs> We've been together about two and a half years and all, in various lineups. Played around gigs in London and built yourself up. Well, we're from Birmingham actually, but we're just down in London a lot because the record company's down here and we've been doing the promotion of shots down in, in London today and yesterday. So that's, that's why we're here. What kind of, uh, you see a lot of the basis of this film, there's a lot of the problems that uh, a small bands have trying to make it. Well, so many. what we did was we decided right from the start that we wanted to go for a big company because I think small record labels, you don't get through to enough people and we just needed all the, um, the big finance to do what we wanted to do with the album, record it in a big studio with the right producer and get all the right artwork and everything like that. So we just did gigs in smaller places until... Um, we got the companies interested and they came and saw us and then we had them sort of battling it out and we eventually signed to EMI. Um, the music you play, uh, is it in any way related to the social environment that goes on here in England? Uh, yeah. Are you trying to make a statement? Yeah, we're trying to say let's have some fun. And that's it. No, nothing else at all, really. Well, you know, it's just good times music, you know. There's no polit political views behind it or anything. Political bands with political messages who get up on their soapboxes and preach to people. Well, I mean, that's been going on now for about oh, four or five years, and it's getting really boring. And, and people have to go to concerts and, and dances, and they go there to suffer. And we've got sick of that, so we think that people should go and have fun. So your approach is basically, you know, you're approaching Well, we're serious about the music and about um, everything that we do with it, but we don't need to 
bring political views into it. I don't think it's not such a social thing. It's just a band that's entertainment. People can go and watch us and have fun when they come to the gigs and listen to the records. I mean, because it's basically dance music as well. So it's just much more fun. And it's working. It's more yeah. escapism rather than commenting on what's going on. It's more. Um, forgetting about what's going on and purely having a good time as he says before. and it's working yes it's working <laughs> so it's for the sex um, you said an interesting point before that uh, you didn't want to go with a small label no right with the, the large label. well that's right I mean at the moment we're um, we're releasing records in on the continent and places like that as well if we'd signed somebody to, like say Rough Trade um, they don't even exist in the continent so it's not much good really I mean we're going to do the States we're on capital in the States we're going to the States before the end of the year and Japan the uh, it's the worldwide and massive, it? strong. do you think there's a change in the direction the music has gone in the past five years um, in, in Britain London. certainly in Britain yeah I mean, I, uh, why do you think there was a lot of well, it was, there was a lot of glam rock and sort of 75, you know, bands like Gary Glitter and The Sweet. Um, there was also the big mega bands. And then sort of 76, 77, it all turned upside down and you had the punk thing. Um, that, that cut everything back down to basics and now it's, the industry's just building itself back up the way it was, you know. Are you part of that movement? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, part of that movement, but we're really a band on our own. We don't... Um, we're not like any other band as such, I wouldn't say. There are certain elements, like the fashion element of the band, which could be compared to the, the scene that's going on at the moment, but nothing else really. The music is just our own, and it's what, very individual. What is that brings up an interesting question? What is the... Uh, how does that fashion play a role? Well, well, we just we just, just take everything as a whole. That's right. Thing. We believe in the, putting the music over and putting the visual side over. And but when we do a show, we don't just stand up on stage and look like we're rehearsing like some bands do. We put on a show. And um, yeah, everything's important. The whole thing. You know, we're entertainers, not just musicians. What, uh, is there a category the music you play? We don't, I don't like to put our music into any category, it's just for people to listen to. We're a very individual band, and to say we sounded like somebody else would be rubbish. It's just totally incorrect. There's no other band I can think of that sounds like us. Yeah, very positive attitude. Yeah, yeah it's well, the only way to be, really. Uh, a second ago, I was talking about that you generally agree that uh, there was a change in the past five years, ten years, musically. What do you think brought on those changes? I think it goes in cycles, really. I mean, the punk thing was about five years ago, and that was like a, a cycle. And then five years before that, there was the glam thing, um, and then just before 1970, there was the hippie thing, and now it's just a new new bands yeah it's just when things get apathetic you know things change oh, probably two years time it'll change again when things get apathetic what do you think influences your music uh, the whole of the 70s really we were brought on, up on 70s music sex, sex and alcohol really yeah. does drugs and alcohol play a part not drugs not alcohol we don't <laughs> we don't we don't drink and, we don't drink and take drugs we really, really, really don't. Honestly, God. Uh, well, only once. Oh, that was his name. Is, uh, is music, I mean, now that you sort of speak main and big label, is music fun anymore? Yeah, it, is. Yeah. it wasn't for a long time, but, you know, we're, we're trying to make it a lot more fun than it was before. And we know that it can be fun, because when I was a kid, it was really good fun to go and see a band. And then... Um, Somewhere along the line, somebody thought, well, you've got to learn from it. It's got to be educational. It's got to mean something. And that took all the fun out of it. So that's what we're doing. We're trying to get a bit of fun back into it, you know? We'll pack it in. We'll stop doing it. That's what, that's what the whole entertainment thing's about, really, just to so that everybody can enjoy it.
business is no problem, you know, that's why we've got managers and record companies, that's, that's their that's thing, you know. We just go write the songs and sing them, you know, that's what... Everybody. You know, you're all right. You're all right. It's uh, very democratic down here in, in Britain. <laughs> Music's supposed to be fun yeah. in America, though, isn't it? Yes. It is. It is. You know, you didn't get onto sort of the soapbox right. bit, did you? It's not, it's, it hasn't gone on to uh, such a social extreme no. until a lot of the bands here. Well, yeah, we see, yeah. yeah, well, that's what happened. I mean, it, a lot of the places in the States and in Japan, it didn't. The showbiz and entertainment, in the purest sense, has always remained, whereas over here we did start to get away from it. A lot of the bands were geared much towards clubs as opposed to larger venues or whatever and putting on a show. And I think we're, we're getting back to that in that we were influenced by a lot of bands from the early 70s. That's what we grew up on. And this band is more about what we would enjoy if, if we were kids, I think, you know, what we would enjoy going to see. Um, we're not interested in making any statement at all. I mean, the lyrics are meaningful in, in ways, but n not social commentaries, you know. It, Okay, um, thanks for your time. Yes, sir. Uh, we'll, we'll take care of